Shane is sitting here today uh, because he entered a beer in our very first homebrew competition this past uh, November. And his uh, entry was the winning one out of about 25 different entries. And his prize was the opportunity to brew his recipe on my system, a 10 pound bag of malt, which I'm sure you're going to enjoy. Uh, and I think uh, a keg of this uh, Belgian bottle will find its way to him somehow. Uh, yeah, it's a pillow for us. It's, and it's going to be good. So it worked out good because uh, when Tom contacted me, I just so happened to have 20 gallons fermenting of a quad style beer, uh, 10 gallons of which we were souring, uh, my buddy and I. So it was like, wow, I've got a pretty good base recipe that we can work on here. I was able to bring up some samples and, and get a good flavor profile of what we might be able to hit. And uh, with a little back and forth, we're uh, we in the kettle right now on our first batch. So really looking forward to it. Uh, so I have uh, mashed in, I've combined my malt, combined it with 182 degree water looking for a mash temp of around 154. That's the temp at which you're going to convert all of the starch that's in your cracked uh, grain husks uh, into sugars, which the yeast can digest. And you're going to start to extract uh, really bitter flavors from the husks of the grain itself. Uh, it just started off as a little hobby and nice to be able to uh to have someone in the industry that you can ask questions of how to make that transition, how to plan for it. So, like everything else in the brewery, um, the keg, the fermenter, the whole system has been uh, washed with a caustic uh, and rinsed with water to neutralize and then sanitized as in kill any bacteria with a highly acidic uh, sanitizer. You, you can get all the way to the end, and if you screw up at any point during the cleaning process, you're throwing away all of that beer. It will have flavor um, defects. The early days in the craft brewing industry, when a lot of people were starting to do it and really didn't know what they were doing, uh, and consumers were trying beer that was not really up to par. In fact, should have been poured down the drain, basically. So a lot of people were turned off initially, but uh, I think we're now kind of in a renaissance, and uh, people who are making beer these days really know what they're doing. This is uh, Belgian candy sugar, and uh, it's typically used in, in Belgian style beers to help give a little dryness to the beer and finish out the fermentation all the way. And some people may have the sense that home brewing is some kind of step down uh, or easier, and that could not be further from the truth. Home brewers get to take more chances, come up with more cool stuff. Uh, the, the one fun thing for them is they don't have to recreate it. Batches can be different, which is, you know, which is fine as long as they're not infected or off. So being a home brewer is a great advantage in a lot of ways. Here we go, back in. It's got some nice graininess there too. Nine tenths of all of the consumers in this country of craft beer that I encounter really, really enjoy being part of this movement. Again, don't view it as a fad. Hope that it grows and are interested in branching out and trying new styles. What I like to see is that uh, people aren't looking for the newest on-the-shelf beer now. They're they're actually looking, like you said, to a wine. What's the vintage on this beer? What year is this beer? So I have four taps here. That doesn't mean I only have four recipes. I have about 14 different recipes that I'll rotate through these taps. Uh, what I've got on tap right now is uh, Big Ned Red. It's my Imperial Red Ale, Mountain Mama's Cherry Wheat. I use tart Oregon cherries, organic cherries, uh, lemongrass, and ginger. Best seller, as I said, have to have it on tap, is uh, the Hop Diggity IPA. Uh, last one on tap uh, of mine is uh, Alia's Amber. Uh, Alia's my daughter. I've been toying with this uh, recipe now since we opened uh, over four years ago. I figured, uh, name it after your daughter, you better get it right. Uh, so I finally have perfected Alia's Amber. I've got a very, very nice color. Um, it's not entirely malt driven like a lot of ambers, so good balance to it, good drinkability. Uh, and that's my goal with everything that I brew is drinkability and balance. Not to hit you over the head with something, not to go over the top, <clears throat> to offer you something you can have more than one of in the city. Drinking a craft brew is viewed as kind of being countercultural. People enjoy that kind of rebellious feel of, okay, well, I've argued with these images for such a long time, now I have something. Process of making that beer, the, the big beers, uh, how they're squeezing every penny out of the process, uh, and it's very, very technologically driven. Uh, so there's not a lot of human contact when you've been here to watch a brew. This is full contact brewing. 
is after I got finished brewing a batch of beer at Snake River Brewing Company in Jackson Hole, I could sit at the end of the bar, and fly on the wall, and listen to people enjoy drinking what I made. I made with my hands. That is craft beer, real, made by hand. The difficulty I have with Anheuser Busch, they have what 98, 99 percent of the market, and they're trying to squeeze out that last little ring of you know hard sweat and effort that, that the real craft brewers are doing to get that last piece of market share to be on top. You know, is it is it really necessary for millions of dollars spent to eke out that last one or two percent? Still doesn't make sense. I think what you're starting to see in structures as, as well as um, kind of cultural perception is wine and beer on equal footing. So something you would expect to see in a nice wine bar, or work, et cetera, and you're starting to see around craft brew. I think you are seeing that transition. You know, people of the younger generation don't want to go into a bar that you know stinks like three year three year old beer that's been sitting on the floor. You know, they they're wanting to go to an establishment that smells like beer is being brewed. You know, they're they're loving the tasting rooms where you're sitting on a beer and being a part of the process as it goes on. Creating a sense of ownership among their customers, encouraging the customers to feel like they are part of the product that they're consuming. The beer drinking community that designed to make the drinker feel like this is my beer.